Okay, YouTube, I think, is going to behave. All right, let's talk about CPUs. Why is the entire world out of the blue suddenly all obsessed with changing iPhone CPUs? So let's talk about this. Um, the, 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 I've been working all day long on this one case that I think is a fantastic example. It's a perfect case for how you learn when it comes to the tough category of brain dead phones. So let's just jump in and go through this case and see where it leads us and see what you can learn. Um, and I think what you're gonna what you're gonna conclude is how important it is to learn more than just this what this one case it's gonna take us down one line. Well, there's many of these, and so we really need to connect with folks that know a lot of researched every one and zero in the phone, and that's sort of what what leads me to say, hey, we gotta team up with China, and that's why we're doing the the master class. So I'm obsessively talking about master class because I'm so excited about it, and I think that you're going to be as well after we go through this case. So let's go ahead and jump in. This is an iPhone 6 Plus. This is an iPhone 6 Plus with relatively minor liquid damage, and let me show you what I mean by that. Like this is you know, pretty, pretty non-remarkable. I thought that it was going to just be an easy, easy case when I first saw it. Um, it has, you know, no water, no water, you know, no water in a lot of these hot spots. Uh, in the bottom half of the phone, nothing, 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 no water down any of that. If we flip it over, no water around there. I've changed, I've messed around a little bit. I've changed TriStar, but there was never water back there. And then even in here, look at that. There's, there's nothing wrong with this phone. Of course, it had its classic um, uh, C5202. Where? Oh, my image is inverted, so everything's upside down. Yeah, so it had VCC main short, kicked off that guy, and guess what? It did not boot. So let's take a look and I will show you what it looks like on DC power supply. So I've hooked this up. This is my janky <laughs> DC power supply and my janky on-screen multimeter. Now I did get, I did get one of these suckers, but I'm too dumb to figure out how to get it hooked up at least in these last few minutes. So let's go ahead and, and take a look. All right. So top VCC main cap, not it. It did have a main short. And after kicking off that cap, that main short did go away. And now let's go ahead and boot this up with DC power supply. So I'm going to connect DC power. And I know that's blinking, but you can see that we've got four volts and zero current consumption before prompt to boot. So we'll go ahead and prompt it to boot with some tweezers. So here we go. Ready? And let's watch that amazing boot sequence. Dun, 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 dun. Prompt, 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 and done. And it is 0 0.02. So that is a whole lot of nothing. So it's just hanging out at 20 milliamps. That's brain dead. 20 milliamps. Now, if we, if we go around and we were to measure these various um, power rails, which let's do that. Let's actually, let's actually see because where our minds go is, oh, maybe it's just not getting power. Let's just get some power up in here. We'll get that cleared right up. So let's do that. Let's go around and, and measure. So weird multimeter being over on the left. All right, so let's stick that voltage. Let's go around and see what happens if we measure some power rails. Let's go over here to our favorite 3VO NAND. Maybe the NAND's not getting power. Let's check it. NAND power is 2.987. So there's our three volts on NAND. What about, uh, what, what can I measure really easily around here? How about over here? Let's measure 1V8, 1.8. All right, so if we go around and we were to, to actually measure, let's see if we can flip this board over and measure up around here, like SD RAM or something like that. Let's see. Can we? I think well, the 6 Plus is down there. 1V8 SD RAM is 1.8 volts. So do we have a power 
problem. No, we don't have a power problem. But this phone is doing nothing. 20 milliamps. This phone is bread, brain dead. Yeah, I need to, to I, I did click my, I flipped one of my other images, one of them, I don't know. And I think I was probably clicking on the wrong one. So I probably flipped everything. All right, so this is the, this is like the Australian style stream. You know, everything's all reverse. Should be like, you should be so right at home, right? Ben Nash. Okay, so this is a brain dead phone that does not have a power problem. So now we can understand. Why would this phone be like this? Why would this phone do practically nothing when we ask it to prompt a boot? However, it's sending voltage to power on all the chips. They're just not doing anything. And the answer is because this phone is brain dead. It's in a coma. It either is the CPU itself is off the board and it'll be like this or the cpu can't speak or the cpu can speak just fine but it doesn't know what to say because it can't communicate with an and or it's missing some sort of important boot chain uh thumbs up like a eprom you know code or it can speak just fine but some chip is scrambling the message for everybody so nobody can hear anything so it's something like that some sort of a category of fault so how are we going to find it and the answer is this is why we don't talk about this category because this shit is hard how are we going to find it we're going to go to master class and master class will teach us all of these things like the the sequence of events and how we can measure how we can use an oscilloscope to really dissect these sort of brain dead problems this one in particular though is a classic it's a classic for the iphone 6 plus it's a classic for the 6 and it's a classic for a lot of these earlier phones and i even talked about it i think two streams ago so this one really is a hot one the other phone that i have over there from two days ago was the exact same problem mark and i both were working on this exact same problem the last time we were together so what is this problem experience will tell you where to look let's see who knows and this is a, i really want to know from you guys in chat um who knows what this uh, problem is? Oh, these are, this is inverted for you guys. While I flip this around, I want for you guys to tell me a 20 milliamp phone that has minor, but not, not none, so liquid damage, but minor. How do we get a 20 milliamp phone? How is this phone brain dead? You tell me while I transform this. Let's do flip horizontal. Is that better for you guys? Did that even, was that even the right one? Let's find out. Let's get that side cam. There we go. And flip. There we go. Is that better? All right. So here, I'll show you guys. Maybe that's a little bit better so that you can see this is a 20 milliamp phone. I've got to vote for it's in DFU mode. That's a really, really good idea. I love that thinking because it would be reasonable it's not in dfu mode great guess if it was in dfu mode and you should know what what does it look like it would be about 70 milliamps 70 to 100 milliamps so 20 is super low it's even lower than a phone that's in dfu mode so this is this is before that let's see did it two days ago the phone is fully updated on updates hmm i don't know what that is i am having a stroke <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take we're gonna turn that off so that uh, so that you have less of a stroke. All right, and let's get rid of this entirely and let's go back to this phone and let's see. Did anybody come up with it? Somebody's asked says, how about battery data? So let's just think. At what point would battery data? Let's just guess. When does battery data cycle count temperature? When does battery data come into play during the the chain of events? If we're just guessing of the boot sequence, would it be like very first or, or down the road? And we, and we can guess because we know what happens if we intentionally interfere with that line, don't we? We know that we can knock off one of those 5S gas gauge filters and see what happens. And the answer is the phone still boots. And after about three minutes, it'll click off. So we'll put battery data as unlikely to make a phone just be super brain dead. This is something about CPU. This is going to be very, very brain stem. Brain is a CPU. This is going to be, this phone has a dead CPU. And that's why this is a big deal because we need to learn how to recognize dead CPU. Is this, why is this phone have a dead CPU? 
How did that possibly happen to this phone? And, and that's a big deal because as we start doing all the CPU swaps, we really have to kind of understand what the heck is going on with the CPU level. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have no clue. 20 milliamp, very minor short on board. No. Yeah, so no, that's a really good one to, to, to get right here. A 20 milliamp is anything but a short. It's not a short. It's the opposite of short. If you think short, you think high current consumption, short circuit, high path to ground, high current. This is low current. So it's the only word that doesn't apply here would be short. You should wash your mouth out with soap for even thinking the word short in this scenario. It's definitely, 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 definitely not a short, as in a short circuit that's causing some kind of big uh, current consumption. All right, does the CPU have caps? Uh, Again, how do caps fail? Caps make shorts. Is this a short? No, this is definitely, definitely not a short. All right, so we're going to have to, um, I, I want you guys to, to understand something here. There's a ton of people out there doing board repair now. And it's in these forums, it's the same advice, the same problems again and again and again. Not a lot of people out there are using your brain. Not, not a lot of people are experimenting and thinking. It's just this kind of recognize common problem and apply common problem, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But you, you really, I think, have a bit of a responsibility to the industry to be doing experiments and helping to further our understanding of this stuff. Because uh, we, we, you know, this is a really common problem that I haven't done a lot of videos on. And, and it, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of folks out here that are recognizing it. That, I think, is the biggest problem. All right, so let's talk about it. I'm going to show you guys the worst physical damage on this entire uh, board. So let's see. If we look around, we had very minor damage, but we had a little bit of corrosion, you know, kind of around here. You know, one little cap on backlight anode was was missing um you know or just really damaged just a little spot there and of course uh, on the opposite side we had our, our vcc main cap but then if we looked hard and i was looking for this uh particular problem and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to go to the schematic so let's go to the schematic and Let's talk about, I think I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Let's talk about this line here. All right, so today's lesson, reset, 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 1v8 when low. So you guys know when you look at a chip that enable is really important data component to the chip, right? All chips have some kind of power in, all chips have some kind of an output, and all chips have some kind of enable and then the other thing that's a real deal breaker is this reset. So all chips have some kind of a reset, which you can think of reset just like your old Atari. Did you guys have an Atari? I had an Atari. It had power on. And then when you wanted to start your game over, you hit reset. So reset is really important because that will take out the entire function of a chip if reset isn't working. For example, Let's think about iPhone 6 Plus touch disease. What line is the problem in touch disease? Answer, oh, it's whatever's M1. Yes, M1, scan, reset. So resets and enables are the ones that should jump out at us when we're exploring a, a, a chip. All right, means it's the problem of CPU. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, let's explore this reset one V eight one low. Let's just explore this one a little bit. And how did we get here? We got here from experience. Um, but this case here is the exact kind of case that would give us the experience that we would need. All right. So let's, uh, let's learn this line a little bit and then we can back up a step. All right. So reset goes to chestnut. Here's reset is plugging into this chip. Who is this? Let's see. It looks like a big data handling chip. 
reset is plugging in at some kind of enable pin on this sucker. And who is this? This is our buddy. This is our buddy TriStar. All right, so this same reset line goes to Chestnut and it goes to TriStar. Now TriStar is important because we know we need TriStar for booting. What else? Reset has a test point, so that's important to know. And it says CPU and baseband reset. So reset goes to a test point. And then here we are, reset 1v8 when low. So it means that pushing it to ground is the signal. Otherwise, it's 1v8. So 1v8 is the normal day-to-day -day value of this line, and the signal is ding, sucking that 1v8 and putting it to ground. So this, let's look at this. Reset goes here into this chip, U0201 Fiji. That is the CPU, all right? So this is the CPU, and now we have reset uh, plugging in here at the CPU. So let's see, what does that mean? Let's look at this little scenario right here where we have PP1V8, that is a top power line. PP1V8 looks like it's a power line. And we can guess that PP1V8 has 1.8 volts on it. And if we follow that around, it's the brain stem of the phone, it's a power line, it's gonna go to lots of places. And PP1V8 is always the top line of many of the data lines that are in the phone. So we can see that this reset line is a data line. It's either a one, 1.8 volts, or a zero, zero volts. So it's either a one or a zero. And now we can see that PP1V8 and reset are connected by a resistor. Now let's think about how this might work. Let's just take a guess. What if we took that resistor off and we made a wire there? If that was a wire instead of a resistor, what would the voltage be down here on reset 1V8? Well, if it was a wire, it would be the same as up here. It would be 1.8 volts all the time. And when the CPU itself wanted to pull that line down, which would make a zero, and that would reset Chestnut, reset TriStar, the CPU would just take that line, touch it to ground. Now, if this resistor was a wire, that would mean that we'd be turning off the lights on the whole house every time the CPU pulled that reset line down. So instead of a wire, this resistor here, R0206, a 100 kilo ohm resistor, that resistor is there. Now let's think about the resistor as it's kind of like a wire. It can with, you know, if you have enough voltage, you can push through a resistor and have the voltage show up on the other side. So let's just think, all right, if we put a resistor there instead, then that will allow us to be able to manipulate or send to ground the 1.8 over on this side without bothering all of 1V8 up top. Okay, so let's Let's come back to this spot here. This is going to be important as we go. All right, so now we have reset 1v8 when low goes to CPU. And here it is at CPU again, CPU. Here it is going to power management chip. And it goes to Chestnut and TriStar. So that's a lot of spots. Now let's do an experiment. Let's do an experiment where let's see what could we do if we wanted to explore. What do you think would happen if we took R0206 off? So we just threw it away. We fed it to the dog. Well, then we would have no ability to make a 1.8 on reset. It's lost its connection to the top line. So reset would then always be a zero. It could never be 1.8, it would always be a zero. We could do that experiment, right? You could actually do that. You could take off that resistor and see what would happen. And I think that, I think that we should actually do that experiment. So what I'm gonna do is take another board. So let's just grab uh, one of my, my project six pluses. All right, here's a project six plus. And just for the fun of it, let's take R0206 off and see what happens if we just kind of delete the, the reset line by making it open line. Let's do it. So let's get rid of this. And uh, reset resistors live kind of under this edge. So I'm going to clip the bracket so that we can get to it. 
and we'll take it off. And then we're just gonna then we're just gonna see. Now, why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want to ask these kinds of questions. We want to to experiment and learn. And this kind of stuff, exploring around, experimenting. Hey, what does that line do? What happens if I break it? That is how you develop an experience base that then you can use to recognize patterns. Right? That's exactly what they do in China, and that is exactly why I am excited about Masterclass, is that they, 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 of course, do this kind of experimenting long ago when the phone first comes out, and so they have a much broader depth of experience than we have. Uh, those guys work together in coordinated teams. Most of us are just, you know, uh, I mean, we have a team of six, which is a lot. <laughs> and I think most microsotters are working by themselves. And that's, that's really a disadvantage. All right, here we go. All right, uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to flip this so that I don't lose my mind. All right, let's see, what's that? I gotta flip this image. Here we go transform uh, flip vertical. That is not quite it. <laughs> I need it to match what I'm looking at or I'm going to go crazy. All right, let's do that. Oh, wow. Why did it do that? Oh, I see it. Flip that whole thing. That's not good. Transform. All right, we're going to go with that. Okay, so reset is this guy right here, this little resistor. So just to recall so that we're all on the same page, on my tweezers, I have a resistor, and that resistor is R0206. If we take it off, we're going to be severing the line between PP1V8 and Reset1V8 when low, which means that Reset1V8 when low can't make a one. It's always going to be a zero. So that's the same thing as just kind of deleting it because it can't make a one and get pulled down to generate that signal and then go back up. It can't do that. And so we're essentially kind of just going to delete it by taking off this resistor. All right, so let's take that guy off, and then we're going to just see what happens to this phone. We're going to experiment. We're going to do an experiment. All right, so I'm going to save him and just stick him there. All right, so now we have deleted it, and that's easy to do. Like, that's not, um, oh, I, you know, I can't do all these experiments. It takes forever. Not really, right? It really doesn't. So let's go ahead and put back on... DC power supply, and we're going to give everybody a stroke. All right, so let's see what happens. I will watch along with you. All right, plug it in. And now, this is my good phone. This is not the one that has the problem. This is one of my project phones that does boot up and should be just fine. So now let's see what happens. Oh my God, look at that. What a shocker. So this now is a, we took a working phone and turned it into a 20 milliamp phone. So what did we learn? What did we learn? What happens if your CPU reset line is not working, you take a working phone and you turn it into a 20 milliamp phone. Now that's pretty cool. So that's a pattern match, right? So if we did, if we, if we sat down with the new, you know, the brand new iPhone next and we, and we were to, to look at the schematic and say, where's everything's going to have a reset and enable start doing these kinds of experiments together, then that's how we can really quickly amass the experience base that we need to recognize these kinds of problems. All right. So now do we know for sure that our phone has a reset problem? No, but we do know that, all right, our phone probably has a, a dead non-functional CPU. One thing, one way to get that would be if reset isn't working. 
All right, so now let's think the next thing that everybody should always be thinking about these phones, which is how did it come to be like this? That's so important. It's such an important part of being a physician so that you don't have to just kind of rely on some kind of machine or tools to tell you. You're a physician, use your brain, figure this stuff out. This is all just pattern recognition, just like any physician that hears symptoms and then thinks, you know, a possible differential diagnosis. Okay, so now let's think, how could our problem phone, how could this guy, I will, I will cut down on the emergency room visits right now. How could this guy have gotten into this 20 milliamp brain dead category? Could it have gotten a reset problem? Let's think, how could it? Let's think, is there any mechanism? I don't know, maybe the answer is no. But let's think, is there any way that this phone could have a reset problem? Let's think. Uh, let's see, who remembers where does reset go? It goes to the CPU. So we, maybe this phone has a reset problem and that problem is within the CPU. Maybe it has a reset problem if that resistor was knocked off. Ooh, let's look to see, is that RO206 knocked off on our phone? That could be a way, let's check. Let's check, where is it on our phone? And it is present, it's this guy, it's this guy right here, all right, that, this guy, ah. Man, that's so mind-boggling hard to do upside down. There, it's that guy. So he looks good. That flux there is all stuff that, that I did. I'm showing you this case after I've already uh, recovered it because I don't want to take risks on the actual live board today. This was really tough. And let's think, what else could it be then? Reset, it's not that that resistor is missing. So what else could it be? Let's think. Um, where else does reset go? PMIC could be, but there's no, how would it get to be like that? Hmm, there was never any water there under the PMIC because it's all dry in that area. What about chestnut? So let's think. Chestnut, now chestnut has that same line, reset one VA one low goes to chestnut on C2. So it goes to chestnut. Should we put our eyes on chestnut? Because chestnut tends to get water damage. It doesn't have underfill and it's out at the edge of the phone. It's really easy for water to just go under there. So let's do that. Let's take a look at chestnut on this phone. And guess what? I have already taken chestnut off the board and I have actually replaced it, but I saved it right here. I saved the chestnut. So even though this phone Let's look at the chestnut area, right? Even though this phone, as we look, does it look like it has water damage around here? No, I mean, there's some flux from me being here, but look for oxidation, like actual water damage. No, it does. It really doesn't look like it had any water there. However, there, there, um, you know, was, a, you know, a little bit of water kind of up in this top bit of the phone. So it's worth a shot just because water tends to go under chestnut. So I took off chestnut and I saved it because this is what it looks like on this. This is this phone's chestnut. <gasps> Look at that. I never expected it would be that corroded under chestnut when it looked really nice around it, but there you go. All right. So here is chestnut. And now here's something that I like to do when I see a phone that, that has pretty minor water damage, but then I see a chip that looks like a total, you know, baby diaper underneath. Let's really think about this. Is there anything that we can learn by looking at the pattern of corrosion? I've got an idea. Why don't we look up which one of those little balls is the reset line? And let's just see, is it, is it one of the ones that's really corroded? and or not and if it is what would it be what would this mud be like bridging it into and would that do anything so let's look that up all right so we need to know where is the dot on this all right so the dot a1 the dot is really hard to see but here it is all right so there's there's a1 so we'll flip this over and now we know that this a1 here is the corner and let's look 
that up. All right, so let's go to ZXW where it's easy to look this stuff up. Here we go. ZXW, what can you tell us? ZXW, six plus, and let's go up to Chestnut. All right, so let's click here on B2. Nope, let's click, yeah, okay, let's click on, let's click on C2. So this is in the A row, this is in the C row, so right here in the middle. This is our reset line, reset, one V at one low, and it is next to B2. Here's B2. B2 is PP Chestnut LXP. That is the chestnut coil. That's one of the dudes that's gonna have the high chestnut voltage on it, right? So that's gonna have chestnuts boost voltage of five or six volts on it, that's a pretty big deal. Let's look at what that would look like, um, whether or not that's a big deal. Let's look first on our chip and just say, is C2 touching B2 or not? So let's get rid of ZXW for a second and let's look at the chip, all right? So let's see, where is this? So this we said it was A1, B1, C1. Here is C2, that's reset. And then this B2 is the high voltage chestnut line. Look at that. We can, I mean, you can see that it is even now in this, in this moment, it's still touching. Look at that. It's amazing that you have C2. C2 is corroded together, no doubt. It is a wire to B2. See that? That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Let's look at what that would look like on the schematic. Let's see what would that look like on the schematic now. So here we are back at the schematic and we have, we have reset C2. If it was touching B2, look at that. That is main switching at the coil to generate all of these high voltage boosts. That's going to be you know, five or six volts, or at least main, depending on when the chip died, right? So that's a high voltage, high voltage bridged into the CPU reset line, which goes to the CPU. So what do you think would happen in that moment when that one drop of water sizzles together, re CPU reset line with a high voltage? Isn't that the same thing as just injecting five or six volts into the reset line, into the CPU. Yeah. And when I started thinking about this phone earlier today, you know, I don't, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm just a mom. How do I figure this stuff out? I do a lot of stuff called, let's see what the internet has to say about that. So let's see. Now, uh, Apple didn't put main next to the reset the chip maker see that b2 is always going to be next to c2 and b2 has to be the switch of the coil so that's that's going to be the the uh whoever makes chestnut uh texas instruments yeah so you can take your wrath up with them all right so let's look and see um what the internet has to say i love this little article I love masterclass. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong. And I will be saying masterclass and I will be expecting everybody to pony up, show up. It's going to be super fun. And this is where you learn the kind of stuff that we're talking about today, which I think is super, super important. I figure out a little bit of it randomly, but China knows all of it. And I can't wait to hear them just walk us through all of this stuff. It's going to be amazing. All right. So that's uh, that's not the article I want to call your attention to. I looked up this when I was I was just looking up uh, what what would be the consequence like what does reset lines do for microcontrollers and what how do they fail and things like that. And I love this article called Ten Ways to Destroy an Arduino." All right, and so here we go. This one method number one: if you short an I/O pin to ground short and io pin to ground that sounds a lot like what is you know kind of similar to what's going on here right we're talking about if we short an 
reset line to a high voltage line. Hmm, so that sounds like, okay, you can kill an Arduino by just touching an IO pin to ground, right? And then shorting IO pins to each other, that's like even closer to what we're talking about, which is taking a high voltage pin and shorting it to the reset line. Up oh my God, this is totally it. Method number, if you apply over voltage to an IO pin, like the reset line. So if you apply over voltage, if you apply five volts to a reset line, then what happens? If you apply a voltage exceeding 5.5 volts to any IO pin, the IO pin is destroyed. The IO pin is destroyed. So that's so now we've got a mechanism that water or mud that we can see under chestnut that we know for sure bridged a high voltage line into the reset line now we have a mechanism of what would then happen well apparently you're going to destroy or injure the the other end of that and the other end of that is the cpu and tristar right so now we have uh, a mechanism we're starting to think oh, this is bad news that our cpu is damaged or dead even because we can tell exactly what happened to it all right so that's you know that's really bad news and one of the points that i want to make with this is that uh you know the the idea of why is the whole world changing cpus it, all of a sudden, in the last couple of weeks, just, just nothing but brag post, brag post, brag post about people with their, their CPU work. Why is that happening now? And the answer is because this phone, a 20 milliamp iPhone 6 Plus, you would think that's ah, brain dead. Maybe it's a CPU. Let's take the CPU off and put it on another board and do a big board swap that doesn't help you solve this problem, right? Because we have a mechanism. The mechanism is water under chestnut sizzles that spot on the CPU. It damages the internal structure of the CPU on the reset line. So if I lift that chip off and stick it on another board, that doesn't help me. This is, I told you guys, really common, right? This is a reset line problem. The, if you look back on my channel, the last time I was doing CP, the CPU swap uh, uh, video that I did most recently was the exact same case, a reset line problem. And there are people that are out there and you can see them on forum posts. Go, go Google reset problems and you'll find that for years, a handful of people, all, you know, they, they know to look for reset all of the time. People that, that tend to have a more broad outlook that look to other information sources outside of just the tiny microcosm of the people that talk on uh, US-based groups. So get out there, you know, look and extend your reach, talk to people that are more broad, that are, for, for, that are in other communities that are away from you. That's really, really key. And again, that is why I'm going on and on about masterclass. I, we really need to mix together what uh, China th does and thinks about problems and us, because we'll be teaching them some things as well. All right. So why is CPU a, such a big thing now? Because the iPhone 7 and 10, they don't get this problem. They don't get the reset line damage that, that kills CPUs. Uh, they don't get that you know, because of this, this mechanism. You, know, you have to have a very specific mechanism. They just don't get that. Water doesn't penetrate them. It doesn't go to chestnut and it doesn't seem to create this problem as often. Uh, or maybe the CPU dye is more resistant to it. I don't know, but it doesn't just isn't a flavor of the way the iPhone 7 CPU fails. How does the iPhone 7 CPU feel? It gets smashed up. Those phones get dropped. So does the iPhone 10. I mean, the iPhone 10s are, they get run over and the board itself is kind of like, it's almost made out of paper. And so all the chips just jump off. That's why on the late model phones that are, uh, that are getting beat up now, <laughs> those are the ones that are starting to show the CPU solvable problems because they are just CPUs are just coming off. And in that case, sure, transfer the CPU. It makes a lot of sense. All right. Uh, 
Are you going to follow the Masterclass video with more? Masterclass isn't a video. Masterclass is a class. And um, I want to come back to this and talk about is there anything that we can do to fix it? So think, I'm going to ask you, is there anything that we could do or try or even just confirm? You know, how would we even confirm this? How would we confirm that this phone actually has a reset problem rather than, you know, any other, any other problem? What could we do to confirm that? So let's think about that. I'm going to ask you that in a second. And I'm going to do another... Uh, uh, plug for masterclass because this is really funny also I, I I you know so everybody can tell that there's a lot of um, you know there's sort of like community drama that's that's going on with all of this stuff uh, and it's really funny to kind of watch <laughs> watch the you know our Chinese partners that are just kind of like what the heck as they kind of see what's what's kind of been going on lately it's been hilarious um, but this is, this is funny. Let's, let's see. Um, I love this. This is to like a post from a few minutes ago, right before I started this stream. Let's find this. Uh, there we go. All right. Here's a post from masterclass. This is our partners phone Kong that are doing masterclass right now in India where they have 55 guys in India. And I just love looking at pictures like this where we can see our instructor Frank and he's showing these block diagrams that really kind of teach us order of operations and sequence of events and how uh, things like reset must be functional. You can just sort of see it in a list of things to check. This is all uh, stuff. I, the first question that I asked Frank when we started working together was, how do you guys get information? Do you have access to factory information, tools and guides, and just sort of Chinese language information that we don't have in the US? And he said, surprisingly, he said, no. He said the factory information is very poor, very shallow, it's low quality information. And the way they know what they know is by having research teams that are dedicated to doing experiments just like we're doing today. So they have a team of people, not one team of people whose job it is to do these kinds of experiments and develop this material. So that's what makes it such an amazing thing that is, that is not <laughs> at all similar or equal to in any way. Uh, hey, let's learn how to flip some chips. That's not the same. All right, um, so, so let's, let's get off of this ad. Now, here's my question for you guys. Uh, what is, um, what's, what can we do? What can we do? Let's just start with what can we do to confirm, um, to confirm that our phone actually has a bona fide reset problem. Let's do this. Let's go back to our phone that did work before we took off our resistor. So if you're just joining us now, we did an experiment phone where we took off RO206. We kicked it off so that we could generate a deadline on reset to see what happens. And it gave us a 20 milliamp phone. Let's put that back. And then let's ask the question of, all right, if R0206 is present, then what is the actual voltage on that reset line? We would expect it to be close to, but not quite 1.8 volts because it has to come through that resistor. All right, let's see. All right, so I have, um, let's use hot air to make sure it gets on there. So I've saved the little, RO206, and let's see if I can get him to get back in his spot. Sit down there, bro. All right, so now he's back in his spot. So now we can do an experiment and let's do a voltage test. So we're gonna come back to our DIY multimeter. Ah, 
I killed the power supply by turning it off and on too many times. All right, let's make it so that you guys can see the multimeter. All right, let's fire this phone up. All right, so that phone is booting. So it's booting as normal. And now let's, while it's booting up, let's go ahead and do a multimeter voltage test on, God damn it, the DIY. I'm gonna go back to the trust-based multimeter after this. This is ridiculous, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. All right, making a mess. Okay, so let's see, what is the voltage supposed to be on 1V8 reset when low? All right, survey says, all right, top side is 1.8. This game disconnected, god damn it. All right, I gotta prompt it again. Prompt, prompt. All right, it's booting. Flip it. Get that measurement quickly before something comes off again. All right, voltage test. Answer, 1.719. 1.719, that is the one on the reset line. And we could kind of sit here and see, hey, at what point does it drop down to zero when the CPU actually pulls it down and resets itself? All right, so now we know that we should get a voltage of 1.71 on a healthy reset line. And if you took a whole bunch of phones and you measured them, they would all have about that 1.71, 1.72. Let's go back to our test phone, our phone that looks beautiful. Well, I took off that chestnut, cleaned it all out. I put a nice, fresh, healthy chestnut on there. I also replaced TriStar because why? Random? No, because of a reason. And the reason is because reset, that's what we think is the damage. Reset goes to TriStar, which would then damage TriStar. So I replaced TriStar. So I've replaced chestnut, I've replaced TriStar, and I've cleared up any possible reset problems other than the CPU itself. So let's see. All right, so let's see what happens now if we take our phone and do the same thing. Let's make it so that, so that we can kind of see both of these. All right, here we go. All right, connected battery. Let's prompt this sucker to boot. All right, we've got our sad, sad state of affairs, our 20 milliamp phone, which we think that tells me now I recognize that. I'm an expert. I have said the word reset at least 100 times. 20 milliamps makes me <laughs> equals I'm hot on the tail of a reset problem. All right, so let's find out what is the actual voltage now on our reset line in this phone. It's supposed to be 1.7. What is it? See that? 0.69. 0 0.69, hmm, so that's a problem. So we really do have a reset problem. That's confirmed now. If that value can't get up to be 1.71, then the CPU, when it pulls it down, it, it's like uh, having an Atari where you can push down on reset, but you can't push the button all the way back up. That's a problem. So that makes the whole CPU just not able to, to turn on. It can't do anything because it's reset. It's kind of stuck in the down position. If you had an Atari and you sat there with your finger on reset and you were not able to take it off, then you wouldn't be able to do it. You, you couldn't play a game at all. You couldn't even start. It wouldn't even load the first screen. And that's what's going on with a reset line problem in this phone. So our challenge then, if we wanted to magically fix this somehow, we would have to find a way to deliver that, that 1.8 volts in a way that the CPU could take it, click it to ground, and return it. 
So we can't just inject 1.8. Oh, screw that resistor. Just take it off. Let's put 1.8 there. There, I'll do it. That'll make it 1.8. It would, but then the CPU can't press down on reset. So that's not going to work. So that makes it a really, really tough, a tough problem because we need to create a situation where we deliver 1.8 hands off so that the CPU can pull it down and let go and it goes back up. So that line has to be able to go down and up. So we can't just inject it and we can't just leave it off and let it stay zero because the CPU has to be able to kind of pull that up and down for CPU plus TriStar plus Chestnut. Yeah, that's really, really tough. So who's got an idea? Who's got an idea? What could we do? What could we do? What could we do to try and solve this problem? Give me some ideas, chat. Let's see what you think we could do. All right, let's see. Inject 1.8 through the 100 kilo ohm resistor. That is the same as we are now. We already have 1.8 there. That 1.8 is present. If we measured it, we would see 1.8. But we're but over here, it's supposed to be 1.7, and it's supposed to go down when the CPU pulls it down. So we can't just inject anything over here, or else the CPU can't pull it down, right? So we can't do either one of those. Let's see. Wouldn't the CPU be the cause of the pull down right now? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. So that's a drag that the, the CPU is, is sucking off some of our 1.8. Now it's only, it's only 0.6. So there's a leak like the CPU. And that's really important point, right? Because that's how this came to be, right? The, the, at, out at Chestnut, where there was a bridge of, let's say, three to five volts, bridge, it, it injured the CPU in a way that makes our reset line have a leak. It's kind of punched a hole in a, in a little blood vessel so that there's a little bit of a leak, so that the CPU can't, it's leaking out our 1V8, so it's dropping it down to point, uh, point 0.6. That's a drag because if it, it has to be 1.8 and then go to zero and then return to 1.8 in order for this thing to work. So let's see. Inject 12 volts, throw this in a can and on to the next one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, I'm gonna let's, let's Chris Long stew on this for, uh, for a minute. And in the meantime, I'm going to find a something to, to show you guys that uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do or not. Let's see. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna go on a hunt. I really want you guys to come up with something. Let's think. I I have faith. Come up with a plan. We may have to throw it away. And sometimes this. Sometimes a lot of the time. I don't know. Sometimes half the time. Maybe half the time this problem does go in the trash can. But not always. Not always. Not always. Let's see. All right. Let's do. Uh, Let's do, let's go here. Let's see. I'm looking for, looking for something for, for, to, to, <laughs> for Chris's suggestion um, that we just throw this away. All right, here we go. All right, let's add uh, a window. Let's find it. Here we go. There we go. All right, Chris. Now if we just throw this phone away. This little girl's pictures are on that phone of her Christmas morning, Chris Long. Her Christmas morning, her Christmas morning, and all the other grandkids. The video of Christmas morning, they're on this phone. I know that because I recovered it. So there's got to be a way. All right, we're gonna delete that. All right, inject through the 100K resistor. That's not gonna help. Jump the CPU, jumper cables. I need a quick rundown. A quick rundown is that, ooh, here we go. Remove 100K resistor from the 1V8 line and inject your own voltage until you reach 1.7 on reset. 
and pass that when it should on boot. That's a, that's, that's a good idea, and I have tried that before, and it has not worked. And it, because I think that when, you know, when, what you end up doing is having to go up too high, and then that, that probably does more damage. You're kind of going back to the original problem, which we know that if you send three to five volts down that line, you're going to cause this injury. So um, what else can we do? Let's think. All right, so quick rundown on the problem. We have reset 1V8 when low. Reset 1V8 needs to be 1.7 volts. We can't inject it because the CPU needs to control it. The CPU has a leak because of prior water damage out at Chestnut. Chestnut had a bridge between 1V8 reset and chestnut coil so high voltage went from chestnut into the cpu causing a little bit of damage here on the reset line cpu is completely brain dead 20 milliamp phone until we can get this reset line to work again which is a really tough problem because we don't have a way to just inject it so the suggestion of let's just take our 0206 off and then let's just add 1.8 on that line well that doesn't work because that makes it always high and that the CPU, if it pulls it down, you know, your, your injected voltage is just going to stay there. So that doesn't work. You have to make that voltage be sort of hands off so that the CPU can pull it down as needed. So Chris's next idea, which is great, which would be, could you use an oscilloscope? And you, maybe you could. Could you use an oscilloscope to figure out when does that line get reset? Is it just reset? reset reset or is it you know we we don't know you'd have to get out you'd le legitimately have to get out an oscilloscope to answer that question and if it's a fast kind of you know resetting reset or resetty re <laughs> reset and make resetty face then you're not gonna be able to do that all right let's see use a scope to check out the pattern of the original boot yeah separate the line from the cpu and produce our own reset all right Okay, so um, create your own reset. Just have to time it right. All right, that's really hard. What about this? What if, <laughs> you know, this is, this is really funny. The last time I had this problem, I, I'll, I'll, let's see if you guys can come up with it. I'll show you my, my, one of my reagents, one of my reagents that I used for this. So Christy, Beloved Christy of iPad Rehab, Christy used to make cloth diapers professionally. She used to like have a business making cloth diapers and selling them on the internet. And then Christy uh, still has a whole bunch of sewing machine and sewing kind of uh, stuff. And here is something that Christy made, available for sale at iPad Rehab Supply. So let's look under the microscope so you can see uh, what I'm what I'm talking about you guys. This was a really hilarious night the last time I was working on this problem um, Yeah, I think it was actually this this exact one All right, let's get rid of this and let's get rid of that ah. All right, here we go. All right, so this is a bobbin of jumper wire that Christy made and do you see how it has writing on it right there? It says, it says 98, 98. What do you think that 98 means? God damn it, it doesn't look like 98 in a mirror. Yeah. What do you think that 98 is? Let's see. Rehot all the things. The cap can be bad. That is true. And guess what? I have had that happen before. So definitely check the cap. And the cap has gone bad before, which is another, which is one of those sort of like key cases like this one, where you really learn how important this line is. This phone really can't, it has no other water damage, you know, nothing, just chestnut. And now it's a reset phone. How did it happen? It was definitely that corrosion under chestnut. Is that common? Yeah, you betcha. And now, now we know for sure what happened to this phone. So now if we look back and we think about all those other 20 milliamp phones, it was probably a really common mechanism. Once you start looking for it, then you'll see it all the time. 98 wraps. That's really close. 98 turns. It's not 98 turns. All right. It's not 98 turns. It is, I'll give you a hint. 
let's look at the hint. I determined this number 98 using this tool. All right, 98 ohms. 98 ohms. So you guys know that a wire itself has some resistance. If it's long enough, it'll have a sizable resistance. And there is so much wire on this that it actually has just about 100 ohms of resistance. Yes. So uh, why do we, what, what the heck does this have to do with our reset problem? Let's think. What does it have to do with our reset problem? What does this have to do with our reset problem? Let's see. So are we just lowering the pull-up resistor? We're going to lower the pull-up resistor, and we're going to guess. So we're, we're not going to make a specific voltage divider. We're just going to see what happens. Like, what if you had some kind of potentiometer or something like that? Wouldn't that be cool? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, what if we had, you know, 1.8, and if this resistor was less than 100 kilo ohms, 100 kilo ohms is a lot. What if we just made it less so that it was just sort of easier for that 1.8 to kind of like go, go through the resistor and we would end up with a little bit more on the other side. Kind of like instead of squeezing a hose where we've got the water turned on over here and here's the voltage and we are squeezing it and there's just a trickle coming out, let's squeeze it less tightly. So instead of 100 kilo ohms, let's try 50 kilo ohms. And then we could find out what is your um, what is your actual voltage. So we so I did that. I said, what happens if we put in 10 kilo ohms? And the voltage that I know needs to be 1.71, it went up to like one volt or 1.1 something like that. All right, what about a one kilo ohm resistor? What about a you know 243 ohm resistor? And that is where I left off. What resistor should we try? So I tried um, a 243 ohm resistor, not so, so 243 ohm. That's really, really low. What I'd like to do now is to try a 100 ohm resistor. So where can I, where can I get a 100 ohm resistor. It's actually kind of hard to find. So let's go on a hunt. This was, uh, this was I think, the hardest part of this project. I, I have a feeling that there's one here in the iPhone 5. So if you just type in 100, you know, you'll find a lot of places in the iPhone 5 schematic with 100. And if you type in 100 OHM, it doesn't find it. Uh, so you end up having to type 100 space 1% and then you can find it. So here's one right here and this is where I've left off. So now you're all caught up to me. Um, R310 RF. So that's R310 RF is a, oh, okay. are you guys seeing this? Yes. A hundred ohm resistor. Okay. So where are you R310 RF? All right. Let's see. I've got an iPhone 5 right here and it still has a back shield on it. I got another iPhone 5 right here, and it looks like this sucker is next to a crystal. Uh, it's by that Q4 crystal, and then there's uh, two little dudes, and it's the one closest to the crystal. So let's look for that. All right, let's get rid of this as well. All right. Um, so around 100 ohm resistor, parts board, yes. Well, what I want to do, and the, Mark and I were, were talking about how useful it would be, I would legitimately like to have a, a and we're thinking about making these, you know, like a, a little kind of tiny resistor set for this exact problem. Once you, once you start looking for this problem, you know, everybody's got, you know, boards that they had no idea what was wrong with it, you know, years ago. If you go back and you look in your shit pile, you will definitely have a reset line problem. When we first realized, hey, this is, you know, this is a big thing, we found, I don't know, we still had like five or six of them that day. So please post in the comments if you go on and solve a reset board. I'm sure that there's going to be a handful of you guys that are like, yeah, who doesn't look for reset problems? 
And that's the thing. Like, the, you guys that are like, duh, everybody knows about reset problems. Where did you first hear about? Tell me your first case. That's what I want to know. What made this get on your radar screen? Because that's what's missing in this industry, is that this sort of inbred, inbred information. Hence, my, my love of Masterclass and why I uh, stand by that being a really, really important thing. All right, so I'm gonna hopefully not lose this guy. Are these tweezers even on? All right, let's get rid of his buddies. So China was really funny today. Oh yeah, they're not on. <laughs> they were like, uh, you need to, they, they said something like, you need to have hand skills and you also need to have brain skills. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. They're so cute, I can't wait. All right, hand skills and brain skills. All right, so this is our sad, sad state of affairs. That's the original one. It's a real dread. I think that the reset problems are plagued by losing these resistors. Losing the resistor sucks. <laughs> you just gotta go drag it out again. Typing on my phone sucks. Yes, exactly. I've not gone down the rabbit hole on these because they're always for the sake of the phone. Well, screw that. Screw that, for the sake of the phone. You got, a, you got a bullet hole in your CPU. All right. And now I really don't know what's gonna happen. Every time I solve one of these problems, I will guess, and a 100, 100 ohm resistor is one of the ones that I guess a lot, but it's not always. The last resistor that I had on here was a 243 ohm resistor that I happened to find. So now we are going to see what happens. Let's see what happens to this phone now. Let's see. Why not invest in a small potentiometer? Yes, please, please send one up. You, you should have seen us. I would really like for you to get your ass up here, Chris. It is so hilarious. I mean, this is what we were doing. We were looking for a potentiometer. We were unwinding the bobbin and like making it so that you could solder on. We were tearing up the kids' smart circuits set that had some kind of potentiometer in it, you know, and then we were, and then we were just, uh, then on, on uh, both of those, it was like a severe short to ground within the CPU. We ended up taking the CPU off and both Mark and I had the exact same problem. And both of us had a severe short within the CPU that could not be corrected by any of these means. So that was a big old drag. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see with 100 ohm resistors. So just in case you are not clear on what we're doing, let's catch up again. So what we're doing is we are taking our 0206, 100 kilo ohm resistor, we're swapping it out. Instead of having a tight 100 kilo ohm separating the 1.8 top line, we're relaxing that with just a 100 ohm, just a little resistor, so that hopefully, even though we have a leak within the CPU, hopefully we'll be able to bleed through enough voltage that that we can still maintain a one and a zero condition that the CPU can, can, uh, can, can chill, can hang. All right, so let's see what happens. Okay, so let's take this away. I'm plugging in, plugging in the battery. And now this is a 20 milliamp phone. So when we prompt to boot, it'll either be same as before, 20 milliamp reset line problem, or it's going to be something different. So let's see, prompt, where is it? Where's that line? Prompt, prompt, prompt to boot. <gasps> is it gonna boot? I don't know. 
so look at that. So that's progress. It looks like it, it wants to boot. It wants to. It wants to, but I don't have any Apple logo. And it's kind of doing that. So that's sort of another pattern then. Let's see what is the voltage. What is the voltage on this? Let's find out. So how close are we to what we need? Let's find out. All right, so let's take, see it keeps doing this little short loop. All right, let's find out. What do we have? We have a resistance instead of a voltage. What do we have? One point six four. One point six four. And normal is one point seven one. So that hasn't quite helped us out. That hasn't quite helped us out enough. All right, so see, see how, but we've definitely have, we've improved things, right? So instead of having a totally brain dead phone, this phone must get to the point where it needs to reset, and it's just unclear. And I, you know, I wonder if you could add a little bit of heat, you know, would it, would you actually be able to get past this or, or what? All right, let's go back and let's do the, let's change it a little bit. So, um, so 100 did not work, but I want to save that 100 ohm resistor. And I also want to check to make sure that I actually got the right one. So let's, let's get, rid, get rid of this sucker. Here we go. So close. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's so close. It's painfully close. All right, so that 100 ohm resistor, I'm going to knock him back off. And I'm going to go fish. So close. And now you can see why it was that we were unwinding, unwinding Christie's bobbin to try to create little tiny variable size resistors. And yeah, I would definitely be into never having to do that again. All right, here's my 100 ohm resistor. All right, now here's the challenge. Let me see, can I still get back? Is it still gonna be on the tape? Yeah, there he is, my little bro. Hey, little buddy. All right, this was my 243 ohm resistor. Now, if we're at 1.6, you would think, well, I should go lower. I should go lower than 100 ohms. I would think that as well. But I had this guy, this resistor on here earlier, and it actually seemed to do better. So I'm going to put him back on. Now these guys are so small, you know, it's really, it is entirely possible, you know, that I may have damaged the one that was the 100 ohm resistor. All right, let's see if I can get it on there without blowing him away. Because if I do blow this guy away, I'm going to be sad. Because I don't really remember where I got him from. Don't run away, little bro. I'm going to use my finger. Because I dare not look away. Come on. Get off. I really need to add some flux or else it's not going to work out here. I really need some flux. No, don't get stuck in my fingernail. No. Yeah. Yay. Oh, all right. Now let's get some flux on there. Got to have the professional fingernails. Right. Okay, there we go. Getting that thing off so that I could get, to, get a little bit of flux. 
is is key. All right, sit down, bro. There you go. Yeah, that would have sucked. That would that would have sucked if it really couldn't get off my finger. Note to self, next time definitely be sure to have flux on there first so that you don't get into the situation of needing to hold hot air and get rid of a resistor with no flux. Because that sucks. All right. Now let's see what happens with a 243 ohm resistor. All right, it's like a booger. Flick it or lick it. Gross. All right, let's grab our, let's grab this. Okay, here we go. Let's see. John Connor's gonna make DIY flux. I will admit that I did grab in, in spring, there's a lot of like maple syrup kind of things. And, you know, I looked around at the pine trees to grab some resin. And I was like, I'm gonna throw this on there, see what happens. Okay. And now let's see what happens with the 243 ohm resistor. boot up <coughs> yay look at that it's gonna boot don't you don't you blink like that bro don't you scare me it's gonna boot up it's gonna boot up let's see if itunes will detect it and let's let it lay back down all right, there you go. That's pretty cool though, isn't it? Look at that. This is still the same reset injured within the CPU. This one has a, you know, serious beating that's gone on inside the CPU. And it is now, you know, it doesn't, it really doesn't like it, but it is going to, uh, gonna boot up. And I know this, because that's how I got the pictures uh, off of it already with that exact resistor. So um, I did notice that when I was doing this before, it was really hard on this thing. It would, you know, you could sit there and watch it. You're like, oh, totally ready to go, totally booting. But it's got a hot spot within the CPU because of that damage. It's got a leak and it's getting hot inside the CPU at times. And that's really hard on it, but it can, uh, boot up and it can stay up for a few minutes and you can suck off those pictures So we did get all of Christmas Day We got thousands of pictures off of this phone and that's why I've been sitting here working on it for most of today You know, I think for the ah, geez. Yeah for about six hours just on this one phone You know because it's a really really great example so I did notice in that six hours of working on it that if I would let it just kind of sit here uh, for a few minutes, then it would uh, tend to be okay. So I would like to see it actually connect to the computer again. So I am gonna put it here on, let's see, can this, let's, I guess we'll just leave it on that. I'd like to see it. All right, so let's try to, um, Let's see. Can you see what it looks like? <laughs> oh, wow, low rent. All right, let's see if it can boot up. All right. Jessa, do you charge more for these types of recovery? Nope. No, because this is how this is how we learn, and I think that's really really important. Um so I don't pay them to let me learn on their phone you know this is a really this case was so important because it had such a minor you know the damage to it was really 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 minor so it was really no question that exactly what happened to this phone <gasps> there it is 
has, yes, there it is. It has booted. There we go. Focus, you piece of crap. God damn it. <laughs> all right, so there, there we go. So we were able to get all of the pictures on this, and then I went ahead and, um, and I uh, put it back. I put the original resistor back on there so that you can, you can see. Um, so yeah, it is a, it's a tough issue to, to solve for sure, but I like this because it's really a great example of um, you know, using your brain and how important it is. If, if you had sat down on day one and said, let me take off enables for various chips, let me uh, sh sit, <coughs> do an experiment on things like whatever I2C lines and whatever enables and whatever re resets that are around the phone so that I can kind of have an understanding of order of operations of things, you can work all of this out. You, know, you absolutely can. We can see that the reset line is really important very, very early on. If you, you know, combine that with some basic knowledge of, of, uh, of how chips work and how circuits work, then you can map out this entire sequence of events. In that case, it's really, really straightforward. And it doesn't take six hours because you know exactly what to do. You know, all right, this is a 20 milliamp phone. I'm going to look for a reset problem. Now, it doesn't have to be a reset problem, but, you know, it's uh, really, really common. And so why is the whole world swapping CPUs now and they weren't earlier? Because every phone fails in signature ways. And if you have what we would all consider just a brain dead iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, it's going to be really likely that it got that way because of exactly this case. Water going under chestnut or electrical damage to TriStar. Both of those are on the reset line. And then that damaging this, you know, kind of zizzling up the reset line and hurting the inside of the CPU. So that is really, 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 really uh, an important mechanism. So none of those actually need CPU transfer. That's silly. That doesn't apply. It doesn't make any sense. Fast forward to today. Today, everybody's iPhone 7 is getting kind of old. Look at audio IC problems. It is a heyday for audio IC problems. And that's all bendy, bendy flexion. You know, what else is a big chip? The CPU. So now iPhone 7s, they are getting jumped on the bed enough times that the bed's starting to get saggy and break. Today is the day that iPhone 7s are gonna all need CPU swaps when they come up as a brain dead phone. So always be thinking, how did it come to be like this? And to, you know, recognize, yeah, now for the first time, really, for the first time only now, does CPU transfer skills really make sense? Because in the past, it sure doesn't when you're dealing with these kind of common reset problems. All right, so there you go. Um, why did a higher ohm resistor work when the lower ohm was 1.6? Um, I would measured this one and it's 1.5. So I'm going to guess, and I'm su that surprises me. That's the thing that I learned on this one. And right after this stream, I'm going to go back to the last case that I thought that, um, that was very like this. And this is the first time I saw that same 100 ohm, 100 ohm loop. I've seen that before, and it was the last time I tried a 100 ohm resistor. In the past, a 100 ohm resistor has solved this two or three times. That's the common solution. Uh, so now that I see a case where, and I thought if you go lower than 100 ohms, you, can, you know, that's silly. You can't, you can't, so there is no solution. So that one over there is in my no fix pile. So right after this, I'm going to head over there and I'm going to try, um, you know, just kind of going up to that 243. I'm going to take it right off of this phone and see if I can bring back that phone that's, uh, that's dead. So uh, if you have experience with reset line faults, then tell us all about it and, if you have some other fault that you're like, man, I see this all the time. Why does no one ever talk about this? Especially if you're somewhere out in the world that doesn't communicate with the same inbred group of people that all tend to kind of know the same stuff and nobody's really adding to that very often anymore. Then tell us in the comments what's going on with that. Sorry, I fixed tractors, not phones. 
Nothing wrong with that. All right. Um, yes, very intriguing. All righty. Yeah. So that is all that I wanted to say about, about uh, this case. And really, it is a giant ad for Masterclass because Masterclass is where you can just sit down at a table for, uh, a, with a bunch of really awesome people for uh, eight days. And you can uh, just sit here and, and be spoon fed this exact kind of information, which is common problems and things like reset lines and how it fails and what the voltage should be and what you can do in exactly this case. And uh, then in the afternoon, there's a uh, happy hour with two free drinks. There's nothing more fun than that with a bunch of people that you rarely get to see. So I'm super excited for our masterclass. It's going to be amazing. And, um, and I really, really hope that you guys see why masterclass is so important and that you guys can put up with me constantly saying this is awesome and everybody should come because this is awesome and, and everybody should come. And I want to show you my, my favorite little thing here. Let's just, uh, these guys are posting their stuff today. Uh, that, not that, that's too loud. It was his little description where he said everybody needs brain skills. So fun, yeah. All right, so that's it. I will see you guys next time. <laughs>